Okay, welcome to the second Flying Minds podcast. Uh, today I'm here with a special guest. Uh, we're just still here to try things out, make sure all the equipment works. And um, yeah, we're also here to introduce you to something completely new that you've probably not heard of before. Uh, for all the board game fans, for all the chess fans, this is for you, for anyone who likes to think a lot. And um, yeah, I'm here today joined by Renee. Renee, could you give everyone a short introduction um, and uh, let everyone know uh, who you are and right. what you're about? Uh, my, well, the people call me Renee and uh, uh, I'm, I'm basically a jack of all trades. I've done lots of things. I love designing and creating things and uh, back uh, and uh, so I've developed a, a new game because when we were playing chess, there was always only two, uh, there was three people, but only two people could play chess. So I came up with a, uh, a chess variant where three people could play. And uh, so what was the main inspiration for that? Like, was it just like that you just didn't have uh, a game that you could play with three players or you actually just wanted to play chess uh, no the uh the inspir well i enjoy playing chess a lot i played a lot of chess and at the ymca however uh there was a lot of times there uh, we, i was usually in a crowd with three people and that's why we wanted to have everybody play all at the same time mm -hmm. okay okay um and uh so i'm gonna give a quick look to our viewers uh, of the board just okay to show yeah. you guys what it looks like this is what um uh, renee's game looks like it's called what is it called renee it's called triangulation yeah and uh well tell us more about the board the board yeah well uh when i first initially uh uh started designing a three uh, man chess game the problem was it didn't work very well with squares, so I decided to use triangles. Now, back in the 70s, uh, when I started creating this game, uh, I was having problems with some of the pieces and everything. So I, I revamped it and designed a different game with, with hexagons and uh, a three-man chess version that worked out quite well. Uh, now, so a few years back, I decided I wanted... Uh, I came across my notes with my design and uh, my drawings and everything that I had for this game, and I decided I would make make it go. Uh, try give it a make it work, and I managed to do it this time. Uh, however, there was uh, problems with uh, uh, pieces of some of the movements in a triangular game, and to keep them similar to chess movements on triangles compared to squares. My bishop ended up going around in circles and uh, it was hard to figure out how to get the knight to do an L-shape uh, maneuver without it actually uh, corresponding to moves f from the other pieces. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're, you're saying like your bishop because he would go in the same color squares. Yeah. He would go around like in circle like this basically, yeah. right? Or yeah. And then well, the basically more like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, more like, yeah, just like that. <laughs> and then, uh, and then the knight, because uh, he can't go like one, two sides, right? Yeah. Well, see if see if if the knight went uh, uh, two and then this way, mm -hmm. uh, it, that would be the same move as as a pawn. Well, uh, I I not able to demonstrate it here but mm -hmm. that's what i figured out when i was trying mm -hmm. uh, looking mm -hmm. at the moves and everything yeah we'll uh, we'll look at the moves uh shortly uh, but what's really interesting is um your pieces and the way you name them and where like how you're bringing back the history of chess back into the modern day tell us more about okay. that uh well as uh as with any project, I always do research. I discover the history and uh, the beginnings of where something comes from. Uh, and then I always enjoy finding ways to improve it and, uh, and work on that. So, uh, but it was still debatable where actually chess originated from. But most people say that chess uh, came from 
uh, was born, as we know it today, was born out of the Indian game Chaturanga, which uh, uh, which is over 1,400 years old. Uh, uh, and uh, so to bring the, uh, my game back to its roots from where it came from, I started using the playing pieces from the Chaturanga, which are the general, the cavalry, the chariot, uh, which is spelt, uh, which is a rook in Persian chess, and the infantry. Uh, I adapted the moves of the playing pieces to correspond to those with chess, uh, uh, to those of chess with triangles. Uh, the infantry, for example, the pawns, can only move forward over a side and attack over a corner. Since an infantry in a triangulation has two different scenarios depending on the triangle, uh, it's has um, uh, it has either one or two choices of moving forward or respectively uh, uh, and respectively the infantry has either four or three triangles it can attack over a corner. Should we demonstrate that real quick? Uh, sure. Like, yeah, let's start just with the infantry, okay. right? Yeah. And um, yeah, so uh yeah what what um what okay. did you mean by the they can the F okay the well players? as you can see this inf this infantry right here ha has a side on the front of itself mm -hmm. so it can move forward that way mm -hmm. however if you look at this piece it has two sides on on in front of it mm -hmm. so it can either move to this way or this way uh, and then, whereas if you have where they're attacking over a corner, uh, this this one here, it can attack over this corner and this corner, and attack these four triangles. Whereas this one, which has two moves instead of one, can only attack across this corner, but has three possible attack points. Yeah, it's a it's a very clever solution to a problem that you had from shifting over the pieces from the squares to the triangles. And um, you said you also tried hexagons at some point, right? Uh, well, that was, uh, that was a, an initial game uh, when I des designed it. Was a, it was a game called Tress, where you had th a variation of... Uh, uh, all, you had all the chess pieces... Ex uh, and an extra bishop because I had three colors on the board, and uh, so the bishops had to maintain going on staying on the same color. And this we have three bishops, and that's the only variation except for the fact that it's played on hexagons. And the rules are pretty similar to chess, and that's variation. Mm -hmm. uh, that that all makes sense. Yeah. And uh, what about the names of the pieces? So the infantry you got from. Yeah, well, all the pieces I've yeah. named from the original Indian chess, Chaturanga, there's the infantry, uh, we have the the Rook, which is spelled R-U-K-H, which stands for uh, chariot, and then we have the general, uh, because in the original game, we had a king and a general, uh, and so... I combine, and since I have a limited amount of space on the board, I reduced it to uh, to one uh, the general, uh, the king, and the queen to uh, just the general itself. And then we also have the uh, the cavalry, which is like the knight in chess, except it has some particular nifty moves in this game compared to. Uh, uh, chess because we're working on triangles instead of squares. Yeah, and uh, the pieces, they are made of uh, resin, you said? Yeah, I have a 3D resin printer that I print the pieces myself. I actually took some uh, plain chess pieces that were available, uh, the 3D images, and I redesigned them to have a lot of triangular shapes on them to uh, fit the game. Mm, very nice, yeah. Um, okay, um, so what about the king, the rook, and the knight, uh, or in your game it would be the general, the yeah. chariot, and the cavalry, okay. right? Well, the rook moves pretty well. It starts at this, at these two positions here, 
And it basically moves like it, I work in chess. It moves along the sides of a triangle. Uh, it would either move this way or this way or this way. And uh, then we have the uh, cavalry. It, uh, well, which, which like in, like in chess, it can jump yeah, over pieces, yeah. correct? And in the initial game, when you start off, uh, the only move, initial move it has is that. Now, the only rule with with the cavalry is you have to, if you start over a corner, you'll have to proceed over a side of a triangle and then an opposite corner. Basically, corner, side, corner. You can do it also over the sides where you go over a, a side uh, you go over a side and a corner and then another side. And we have to be sitting somewhere else for that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the cavalry is allowed to move either two or three triangles. So if he's here and he goes over a side, one he has to move over two first or he can do the optional three. So he can move there. Now, one of the moves I found out was if you want to get your cavalry there pretty quick, you move three and then you move two back. Hmm. That's true. Yeah. So bas basically, um, the knight, instead of um, how in chess you have it, it moves only um, uh, one, two, and then to the side. Yeah. Right? And then here in, in this game, in triangulation, the knight moves as straight as it can possibly get. Yes. Right? There's no piece that can move straighter than the knight. And he just jumps over whatever he's um, whatever he's going over, and then yeah. he just lands on uh, the triangle, either uh, one after the initial one that he skips, or yeah. two after the initial one that he skips. Yeah. So in other words... So creative. From the first start, he can go here. And it's actually... Uh, I designed it in Chechua because the knight travels differently in chess compared to uh, uh, the other pieces. And that's what I did with this, this game. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. What about the general? The general? Well, he's basically like a, like a king. Uh, however, he can move over any of the sides. And just like with the pawn, he can move over any of the corners, but he can move to any of the three over the corner. So he's basically got a full circle around him that he can move. Yeah, so he's basically more powerful than yeah, the king and chess. More powerful. Actually, the pawns there's... are also more powerful too in this game too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, what made you decide to leave some pieces out of the game? Well, like I said, uh, initially uh, I had some problems with, with the way some of these pieces moved. So what I initially did was... Uh, uh, the bishop was having issues with just traveling around in circles, so I decided to leave that out. Uh, because of the limitation on the board of the triangular shape and placing the pieces, uh, it just wouldn't uh, be a nice symmetrical uh, layout like in chess or is in this game. So I decided uh, I would uh, get rid of the... Uh, the queen and uh and well and give that also uh because the queen would have the rooks are already like very powerful yeah. basically right they can already move yeah. like six but also with the queen for instance it, it could go over the sides but then when it went over the corners like a bishop it would just go around in circles too that completely breaks <laughs> the game yeah. yeah yeah there's there's no way to make yeah. that work yeah. so there was uh yeah there was no way to actually because the queen would lose some of its uh, efficiency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and also they fit like perfectly onto the board. Like if we look at the board right here, yeah. they fit perfectly into every wedge mm -hmm. of the triangle. And Well, that's um, why we only have five infantry instead of eight pawns, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it would fit with the board too. That's perfect, yeah. And what if I only have one other player to play with now? What if I don't have well this uh, is a players? this this is a three army chess game, and whether you're playing with two or three players, there's always three armies in play. 
And when, when we start off a game, like uh, it starts off with the red and then the green and then the blue player. And if you're playing with uh, three, two players only, we swap around the general and the knight, uh, the cavalry, uh, so that it's harder to capture the general. And the reason why we do this is because in regular play, when one general captures another general, uh, the capturing general gets to use the leftover pieces from the captured uh, color. Yeah, so for example, if I would be playing green right now, and I, um, let's say uh, blue is the passive player, right? Yeah. So there's no blue player, but uh, let's say Renee is playing red and I'm playing green. If I somehow get to take away the king or the general, right? Yeah. Then I get all the leftover pieces. Yes. Now in some games that might be many pieces, and in some games that might be just a few, depending on how hard you fought for the army, right? Yeah, exactly. So that makes it really, really interesting. And um, what else? Oh yeah. So in in a regular game of uh, three players and in the two player version. Uh, what happens to the pawns if they get to the very back? How does promotion work? Okay, the promotion works. Uh, the uh, the infantry has to get to the corner. Uh, we discussed some of this uh, before, but the infantry, once it gets to the end here, he can move this way or this way and uh, along the edge to get to there to... Uh, to rescue another piece that was captured by the other players. You have to get to the opposing corners. You have to yeah. get to the opposing corners. Now, however, if he's sitting on, on a black triangle here, he can actually attack still over this corner. So if th this infantry can actually attack this infantry, and uh, or he could move here, you know. Mm -hmm. and, That's and basically a rule exception to allow the promotion on the corners, yeah. which makes it a lot more challenging, right? Yeah. Um, before we move on to actually playing the game, um, I was going to ask you if you could show us some of your prototypes because a lot of these boards and the pieces, you made them all by yourself. Yeah, I correct? did. Yes. yes. And um, I think that's very um, respectable, right? And um, you tried out lots of different versions, lots of different variations. You gave some away to family, to friends, uh, to people you really wanted to test them out for. and then. Yeah, and you kept working on this project over and over until you got us right. Walk us through the process. Okay. Well, the first uh, the first game that I I created was was this one here, which is just in a regular game box. And uh, let's open this up here. Yeah, kind of hard to open, huh? Yeah. Well, it's a tight box, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it comes uh, it comes with the instructions. And it comes with a bifold board and the pieces in, in the box. And, uh, and the pieces are made of resin, right? That, yeah, that, that's it, one it, thing that never changed. Printed. Okay, yeah. and then this is the board. It, fold, it unfolds like this and comes out like that. Mm -hmm. So this is what you would find in like any other like bo board game, basically, yeah, right? Exactly. In every, yeah. Like in your basic Monopoly board or, yeah. So, but uh, the the procedure of making this is quite tedious, uh, doing it all by hand and everything. So I decided to come up with some different designs. And one of them was uh, this one here, uh, which is a, an oak box, uh, which uh, where the... Um, uh, and and it actually is a lot easier for me to make this box than it is the other box. It it has a lid that comes off like this, and then uh, inside is a bifold board. Wow, it also pieces. looks a lot nicer than the other one. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, yeah. And then I got some embellishments on the side and to make it really fancy looking. That's definitely an upgrade. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And uh, how does the the bolt unfold unfolds the same way as yeah. the previous one, yeah, right? It's, okay. uh, uh, it's this. Uh, now, my first version of this version actually had where the board actually was the lid to the box. 
Okay, and then uh, I decided, well, since I, I needed to make, make it more economical and efficient for people to uh, play the game, I came up with uh, this version, which is a triangular box. And if you open it up, then you have your, uh, your game board. Uh, and there's actually two game boards in this box, which has the triangulation, uh, the triangulation board that rolls up with the rules and uh, also has a canvas board, which is this one here. Uh, the canvas sure. board is a little bit sturdier, right? Yeah. Like it will hold for a longer time. But uh, anyways, and uh, but basically everything else is the same on that. But but this was a really simple, easy uh, procedure for me to make make the boards, make the game together. And then uh, I decided, well, I, I have my own little cutter and I have my own little 3D printer, but the cutter wouldn't cut out like big, huge full-size boards. And I didn't want a full-size board in one piece either because of transportation uh, issues and everything to make it more portable and all. Uh, so I came up with this design with this new board here, which actually is so you can break this part without breaking it apart. Three, uh, three bus puzzle pieces that come together. That's uh, yeah, that's the most interesting one of all of them actually, because they fit perfectly together. Oh yeah. Well, it took a while to get them designed like that, but <laughs> but uh, I enjoy doing all of that. So, and this is going to be my latest uh, version of the game. Uh, and I'm going to make them like this. And they're going to come in a uh, triangular box. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have one with me yet. But also, I'm going to make another version that also has a wooden triangular box similar to this one. Except it's not going to have this top on it. This is going to be coming out a little more. And it'll be just a straight triangle box. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll fit the theme uh, yeah. a lot, definitely. Yeah. Okay, should we give it a try? Should we go into the strategy and uh, play sure. a game? So the game we're going to play is probably going to be just uh, two players, yeah. right? Since we, we can play two yeah. player game. Um, so yeah, we'll just show you how it works. Right. We're just going to put the board together. Yeah. It goes together so nicely. It's uh, oh, so satisfying. Okay, I guess I'll be blue and you can be green. Yeah, and, uh, and we'll make red the neutral army. Exactly. So I'll have to flop these around. Okay. okay. So now in chess, you have uh, where you, uh, the infantry or the pawn can move two spaces on, from its initial move. Now in this game, because we have this wide space in the center where the infantry can't get to it fast enough, we've adapted that rule a little to make it uh, to go, th it can go three triangles on its first move. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention was uh, it doesn't have to be its first move. Like, for instance, if you have an infantry that's here and he moves this way, as long as he's in his initial row, he can still do the three moves. Oh, okay, okay. I you see. Know, as long as he's in, in the, his starting rank. Mm -hmm. That was a recent adaptation, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So should we try it like that then? Yeah, sure. It's uh, RGB, which means I'll yeah, start, red, yeah? Green, blue. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, red usually starts first, but since the red is the neutral army, green will be next. So I'll start by going one, two, three spaces then. Okay. All right. Now, I can't do that, but I, I can actually move there, but I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this changes the game differently from... What I'm mm -hmm. used to, mm -hmm. because before I could actually go here, remove this guy here, prevent him from moving there. However, so we have to come up with new strategies now. Okay, uh, I will go this way. Yeah, and this is another one of the key parts of the game is as soon as the knight comes out, the other player has to contest the squares that the knight is going to be going to. Otherwise, one player can just easily take over uh, an entire army, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so in this move, what I'm going to do is then I'm going to go move over here. 
Ooh. So now I can uh, go there and get the general real quick. Okay. Um, which means right now the blue knight is attacking uh, this square over here. It's the middle pawn from red. And if I want to defend it, I have to go to the same exact square, but mirror to the other side. Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That have... will happen to me a lot more times. <laughs> yeah. We have a chess player here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then uh, now I'm contesting yeah. the same square. And now it's all about the battle of who can support their knights the best. Yes, exactly. Okay, so uh, it's your... No, you move that. Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Oh, yes, that's fine. Okay, looks like the knight's already being defended. I see. Now that the infantry is actually faster, Rene is trying to support his knight with the infantry. Interesting. Yes, exactly. And now I can do another move here and actually support the infantry and the knight, at the, the cavalry at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That makes sense to me, yeah. Okay. Let's do this move. Okay. Now I'm going to just move the rook over. And uh, yeah, obviously, blue is not going to be taking the bait here most of the times. Because otherwise, the green knight can just hop in and get the red yes. general for free. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to castle. So in this game to castle, you just switch the king with the rook. Yeah, as, as usual. As long as the, none, neither one of the pieces has moved before, just like in chess. Okay. Then I'm going to move there. Mm hmm. Now I know I'm giving a lot of material here, but <laughs> there is a. There is a method to this madness. Or is there? <laughs> well, not this one time. <laughs> I'm playing it a little differently this time. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to. Are you ahead. sure you want to do that? Yes. Take the knights. I will take your rook. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay. The famous rook sacrifice. Yes. Okay. So what shall I do? I was worried there for a second because there was a move that I was uh, thinking about that would actually uh, ruin my whole plan. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, that was very close. Oh, actually, just let me think about this here. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to move this guy out. 
Okay, and now, would you care to explain what's happening here? Okay, now he's captured the general. So now he gets to use these leftover pieces in on the red pieces as his ally to help win the game. However, they have to uh, move accordingly to their color. So the red infantry has to move this way. Now, as you can see in the game, we have these little red uh these red lines and these green lines and these blue lines those are indications of the direction the infantry has to move and when an infantry is attacking it has to attack over its colored line perfect okay um did you make your move no not yet Ooh, he's coming after my king now this is going to be interesting <laughs> I think a good move would be this right here. Yes, that would be because you're threatening my other rook. Mm -hmm. And Plus it's also protected by that. Yes. And as you can see, the infantry is going this way, so it can actually uh, attack and protect over this corner, but it can't, not this triangle. Mm -hmm. Whenever the infantry is on. Uh, the black squares, they can only attack four. And then when they're on the white squares, they can attack three. three yeah. I do think, however, that it's different depending on what color you play, right? Or is it no, always no, the same? it's the same. White attacks three, black attacks four? Yeah. Always? Okay. Yeah. That's actually really easy to remember. Yeah? Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, so now... What am I going to do? Hmm. So what is your thinking process here right now? My thinking process is, well, I'm trying to see how I can put your general into check. And okay. When, and when you're checking, uh, someone in this game, uh, we have the three colors, so it's hard to tell. So if you say check, well, who's checking who? Well, in this case, if I be checking green, I would go blue checks green. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Blue checks green. Oh no. <laughs> That's a pretty good check, yeah. Is that checkmates? Uh pretty well, yes, I would say so. Cause my little guy is not able to take this rook. Because the other rook has, because the other rook's in between. Yeah. Yes, and it and it would be in check. it would be in check. Yes, and can I? I cannot move here. You cannot move there because this piece is there. If this exactly. piece was not there, he could move there, mm -hmm. but that still would be check. Mm -hmm. But he could move there, which wouldn't be check. And if he could move there with this piece not being there. He could move there and he mm -hmm. would not be in check. But in this case, he, he his only moves are here, here, and here. Yeah, that's uh that's a really good checkmate right there. <laughs> yeah, good job. Yes. Um because in uh, in chess this would be called a pin, right? This pawn is pinned. Yeah. He can he's not able to do anything because otherwise the rook would be attacking the king. And um and my pieces are completely overloaded and it doesn't even matter that I have all of the other army captured because I didn't uh, care enough about defending my king. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to mention because uh, we were seeing this situation here, for instance, uh, we have, uh, we have pieces sitting here. Now the infantry, he can attack over a corner. He can attack over these three. However, because there's a piece here, 
he cannot attack this one because this one's in the way. So no matter what color they are, yeah. if a piece is in the way, yeah. it's in the way. It's in the way. Yeah. And that was the same thing here with the Rook and, mm -hmm. and, and the, G the General. Yeah. That was a good game. Yes. Um, Short to, and sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, cl to close things off, mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the future of this game. So how are you, what are your plans? Um, are there going to be more rule changes? Is it still in the testing phase? And um, yeah, and how how can uh, our listeners and our viewers get their hands on this game if they really like it, right? If they just want to try it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, that that's a fair questions. Uh, the first thing is, um, uh, um, uh, where was I now? Here. <laughs> what was the question again? Okay, let's start. Let's start uh, step by step. So first is. What's the future for the game? Is there going to be any more rule changes? Um, and what stage of the development are you in currently? Okay, well, I started testing triangulation in the community by first going to several times to the Calgary Downtown Chess Club, which plays casual chess uh, Thursday evenings. Um, many there were seasoned chess players and found the game interesting. Some thought too challenging, actually, because they weren't familiar with the moves. Uh, those who played it enjoyed it, and some found it a fresh new take on chess, actually. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I can totally agree with this, by the way. The yeah. first time <laughs> I played it, I was very overwhelmed. I was like, I'm just going to watch and see what happens. Maybe I'll read the rules another time, but I actually just really want to see it played. Because it looks very interesting, but it doesn't look like something you could just figure out. Right? It takes a little bit of time, right? Yeah, And then... Um, yeah, after that, once I learned the rules, it's so refreshing from like all of the theory and all of the, uh, okay, like now we're doing like this and that variation and this variation, like you just, you just break away from it, right? Yeah, because there's no, uh, because the, the moves and everything are all different. They're the same in, in chess, but the strategies are different. Yeah, it's, you, you have... You have so many new territories yeah. that you can discover because no one has ever like made theory for this game, right? So you could just start right now theorizing it, like just being the best player of triangulation ever that has ever existed because the game is completely fresh. There's so many new opportunities for good players to figure it out, right? Yeah. And it's kind of a race, right? Yeah, and that's why I didn't call it uh, three uh, a three man chess or three army chess. Uh, that's why I gave it the name triangulation, and I based that on basically the um, uh, where is that piece? <laughs> okay, well I basically based it on the fact that it's played on triangles. Secondly, there's a rule in chess called triangulation, where you use the pawns and the, your king to capture the other king when those are the only pieces left. And the fact that triangulation actually means where you have one or two people uh, in a conflict and they bring a third person in. Mm -hmm. So uh, how can, how can uh, people get their hands on this okay. game? So if they, if they want to try it out, of course, yeah. you can come into the Flying Minds Education Center on Friday at 5 p.m. here at uh, Willow Park. And um, yeah, it's very likely that you'll find um, Renee or myself um, uh, a lot of times here and we can help you learn the game and we can help uh, you understand the rules. And there might be other players as well who already know how to play it because we have uh, three or four boards here that are ready for you to try out. And if you really like it, then... Well, then, then you can go online to webstamp.ca and order it online from the website. Uh, if you want to know what the rules are, I have the rules in English and French on the website so you can actually see if you enjoy the game or not. Amazing. Thank you so much for uh, coming uh, out here to the Flying Mind Center oh, no and problem. having this interview. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed uh, talking to you. I enjoyed you presenting the game to everyone. Well, and I enjoy presenting it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I wish everyone lots of fun trying it out. As I said, come here on uh, Friday at 5 p.m. You'll find Renee, you'll find myself, you'll find Triangulation. And um, yeah, otherwise, 
wherever we have um, this content posted, it's going to be very easy to find the link uh, to get it yourself. Okay, uh, thank you so much, and uh, I'll see you next time, hopefully very soon.